Hi, I'm Joe Roth. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and informing people about our life-saving mission. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, United Water, Making the planet sustainable is the best job on Earth. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Caldwell University. The New Jersey Education Association. New Jersey Sharing Network. Dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. And by PNC Bank. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. We are honored to be joined by the mayor of Jersey City, Steve Phillip. Mayor, we're here in your community talking about the culture of health, an event sponsored by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, what does the culture of health mean to you? Well, there's, there's a lot that cities can do, obviously, to uh, promote healthy living, um, expand when the life cycle, ultimately, uh, and I think Jersey City's doing a lot on that. So, um, obviously, it's important to be putting all these nonprofits together in a room. We're grateful for the opportunity to host it here, and uh, we're looking forward to a lively discussion. Talk about some of the things you're doing. The Jersey City, one of the first community on paid sick leave. Yeah, so Talk we, about that. We were sixth in the country. Um, President Clinton spoke about it. Uh, we were the first in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, no mother or parent should have to choose between um, losing potentially um, a significant portion of their salary and uh, taking a loved one to the doctor or taking care of their own health. And in Jersey City, they're never going to have to make that choice. So it's something that hopefully the state will emulate. Um, it's an important initiative, and we were proud to be the first. But what does that, someone says, what does that have to do with creating a culture of health, you say? Well, look, it's uh, healthy, obviously, because you don't want sick people coming to an employment place and expanding um, whatever they have. You don't want them handling food. You don't want them being around other people. You want to make sure that they're taking care of their um, themselves and their loved ones, and, and that's important. So that obviously impacts healthy living and um, something we're important to us in here in Jersey City. It's interesting here, along with the mayor at this uh, foundation, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation sponsored event here in Jersey City, um, we have folks from the um, from the educational community, from the healthcare community, from Barnabas Health, who are involved at Jersey City Medical Center. We also have folks from uh, not only from the educational community, but dealing with little kids, young kids, but also from the development community. One of your developers in town who is here, I'm thinking, what is he talking about? you know, the culture of health. But the truth is, how you build your buildings matter, no? Yeah, you know, I was. Actually, it's funny. I was reading the other day about, uh, similar to LEED standards, there's actually a new standard. Tell folks what that means. So LEED standards speaks to environmentally friendly buildings. And uh, there's different standards than you can apply for certification. And uh, that talks to the Green Initiative. There's actually a new standard that's being promoted now focused around wellness and how um, health how, how, how much of that building promotes healthy living ultimately and um, or doesn't or doesn't you know and uh, you know so construction actually matters what type of materials they're using um, what type of access they have to uh, things that promote healthy lifestyles so you know development is important part of the conversation and Jersey City's growing so it's good to see that developer here I'd like to know who that is okay. <laughs> you, uh, but you are bullish on this town uh, yeah, we're, we're growing. We are going to be the biggest city in the state of New Jersey next year. I know the Newark guys love it when I say that. Does Roz have a hard time with that, Roz Baraka? Corey had a hard time. Raz has a <laughs> hard time. You don't care, do you? I say it every day. I say it every day. I mean, we're going to have the 20 largest buildings in the state all here in Jersey City, and uh, our unemployment rate is dropping. We're growing. It's a good, it's a good narrative here. A lot of good things happening. Yeah. Let's shift gears a little bit. Um, Post-Sandy, yeah. water-related issues in Jersey City, how challenging? So, you know, we still got problems. Uh, we're exploring different sustainability options. We are uh, installed a massive amount of pumps in order to uh, eliminate some of the flooding issues. We recognize that with rising sea levels, we need to kind of account for what's going to happen the next 20 or 30 years. So, um, 
you know, we're doing a lot of studies right now to kind of figure out what makes sense from the financial standpoint to uh, plan for the next 20, 30, 50 years. It's a real problem here. Sandy brought it for the forefront and, uh, you know, and it's something that's not a one-time incident by any stretch. Do you think, Mayor, that, that because you dealt with what you dealt with and other government officials, policymakers struggled with the way they did and so many people did as well, that, that a lot of citizens are saying, I don't really want to talk about it anymore, but the fact is it is left to policymakers to deal with, even if you may not be the mayor 10, 20, 30 years down the road, people will still be affected by it. Right. Don't all elected officials have such a long-term view about... Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think ultimately uh, the ones that are responsible are actually thinking about how to make uh, the cities a better place 20, 30 years ago. It's 20, 30 years from now, it's becoming a harder conversation because it's less on people's mind as it was a year and a half ago. So every time you want to spend dollars on this, people are becoming more and more removed from the immediacy of what happened after Sandy. So it's harder. It's a harder pitch to say we're going to spend 20 million here, 50 million there. That's real money. But uh, if you're going to talk about what makes sense for Hoboken, Jersey City, areas right here, um, you got to be thinking about spending some real money in order to make these things uh, work long term. It's interesting. One more question for the mayor. Um, he has joined us on Capital Report many times with my... Um, my favorite show. You hear what he said? It's his favorite show. That's on record. My colleague Raphael Piroman and I often have very engaging, interesting conversations with the mayor about a whole range of issues. We talk about crime a lot, but I'm, I'm curious about this because we are here um, in Jersey City. By the way, tell everyone which college campus we are on right now and why this is so special, and then I'll move to the issue of crime. So we are at NJCU, New Jersey City University. It's growing. Um, we're building more dorms here. They have actually created a community here on the west side of Jersey City. We have uh, three higher education institutions in Jersey City, uh, St. Peter's University, Hudson County College, and NJCU. All are growing. And if you're going to grow a city, you've got to be investing in education and healthcare, really. Those are the two backbones, if you ask me, on opportunities. So uh, we're at NJCU. They've done a terrific job. You just had your president on uh, Capital Report as well. She's great. She's terrific. She's terrific. Dr. Henderson. I know who she is. Yeah, I know. Uh, I just want to let our audience know. But here's the thing. With Steve Phillip, Mayor Phillip, we've often talked about crime, violent crime. It's a problem in all urban communities. What would you say, Mayor, the connection is between the challenge of fighting urban crime, violent crime, and creating a culture of health? Well, I mean, it starts with people kind of feeling from a sentimental standpoint. They, they live in a neighborhood that's safe and uh, walkable and comfortable. And uh, that starts with uh, effective policing and people feeling good about their neighborhood. So a lot of it's psychology as, as well. You know, what we've seen in Jersey City, we've made huge progress on crime. But uh, perception that people have lags reality, which is a challenge for us. So, um, you know, we put a lot of uh, resources towards visibility, trying to make people feel better about their neighborhoods. And uh, ultimately, that has a real big impact on kind of how they act. And how they act impacts their health. You know, I said that was the last question, but this is the last question. Uh, you know, we work in PBS, and some of our colleagues in PBS told me that I had to ask you this question. You've never been asked this before. What's that? You ever think about running for governor? No. You've never been asked that before? Never. Never. You've been asked that a million times. Fuck. Uh, yeah. You know, people ask it. It's kind of flattering. So, uh, um, I know. What's the answer? I'm not interested whether you're flattered or not. I mean, look, the, the, the reality of the situation is if I tell you I think about it, I'm doing a disservice for uh, what I'm trying to do, and I love Jersey City. If I tell you I'm not thinking about it, you don't believe me. So uh, I'm in a lose-lose situation. So what's the answer? Uh, I'm going to punt. You like football, don't you? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's it. So that's it. We'll see where it goes. But I, look, at the end of the day, Jersey City, this place is the best. And uh, I just love this city. I love it. I love it. There's so much going on here. And uh, if my political career was to end as uh, the mayor of Jersey City, I would sleep fine at night. I literally love this place and I love the job. And every day I wake up excited. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. It is about everybody in a community coming together, working, saying, we have stuff that we do that's really important for health. 
And we need to think of those decisions, whether it's our schools, whether it's the private sector, uh, think of those decisions that we make and how they can help the health of our uh, uh, community. So uh, we're starting a uh, series of uh, forums around the state. Jersey City is a great place uh, to start, uh, and not whether it's going to be the number one uh, size city, but it's a city that is starting to, to grow again and think about uh, how it's going to be a good place to raise a family, a good place for business uh, to come, as every community, every mayor, uh, every state uh, wants to be. We're here with uh, Jim Marks, who is the uh, Senior Vice President and Director of Program Portfolios at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We would not be here if the foundation had not gotten us all together, broken down the silos and said, right here in Jersey City, we need to talk about the culture of health. Why, Jim? What we see, Steve, is that what's been happening in our nation is we cannot afford the cost of health care that we're, we're, we have, uh, and we're not doing well as a nation. And what we've realized is that as we think about how we're going to make those changes, it's about staying healthy and living healthily. Making a place a good place to raise a family uh, and, and play and be active. That's what needs to happen in Jersey City. That's what needs to happen in uh, New Jersey as a whole. You've got people from the healthcare community, from Barnabas Health. You've got people right working in the schools and, and, and the real estate community, development community. I'm thinking to myself, all these folks from all these different sectors all a part of creating a culture of health in Jersey City? Absolutely. So with the schools, of course, that's where our children spend their time. That's where they eat a lot of their food. They could be active. It's about making uh, schools healthy places for our kids. When you think about the development in a community, it's not just about uh, an apartment or housing or offices. It's about sidewalks. It's about small parks. It's about making it nice places to walk around for families. And the role of the foundation in all this? So as a foundation, we've been concerned about health and health care for over 40 years. We've invested a lot in New Jersey. We've invested a lot around the nation. But we realize if we're really going to turn this around, we have got to have all of our nation, all of our communities, recognize that what they do is important for health, and they think about health when they make their decisions. Finally, a most significant accomplishment that uh, could come out of this very significant, significant forum right here in Jersey City today, Jim. Most significant accomplishment and where we go from here. So what we hope will happen in, New in Jersey City and in New Jersey as a whole is in fact that the mayor, civic leadership and the, the private sector all say we can get together and work on this and make our community a great place for families to live and raise their kids and that will make it a good place for businesses to come. We see this as crucial for the future of our nation because if we cost much more per person than other countries, businesses will start to look at other countries as places to, to move to. We are here with Jessica Schaefer, who is with an organization called the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, which is? The Alliance is a national nonprofit with the mission to reduce the prevalence of childhood obesity. And in my role, I'm the program manager for our Healthy Schools program. And so we work with schools across the country, and I specifically work in New Jersey, to create a culture of health in schools. And you're part of this distinguished panel today, put together by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, to really talk about creating a culture of health in Jersey City and, and the potential to do that throughout this state and the region. Talk about the connection of what you do with these young people, these children, and, and what that has to do with creating a culture of health. Great, so I work at, from the district level and at the school level, and we work to really create a culture of health within the school building so that everything from the classrooms to the cafeteria is promoting health within the building. For example? So, for example, we work with the food service director for the district and then also at each individual school to make sure that the school menus are meeting both the federal USDA requirements, but then also even going above and beyond that to make sure that um, healthy foods are really accessible um, and promoted to the students. I'm going to push you a little bit because we have school-aged children. Instead of what, you'll have what in the cafeteria? Um, so one great example is um, in Jersey City, the food service director has been doing some great things with um, providing extra fruit. So by the um, end of the register where the kids would be leaving, um, there might be a fruit bowl there and the kids can select something that they might want. Um, also adding salad bars into the schools. We even have one school that's really creative and they've added a yogurt bar. So a yogurt bar? A yogurt bar. So kids can get um, yogurt, granola as an addition to or, um, to, or instead of their um, meal for the day. It's interesting, the whole question of childhood obesity, um, huge problem in this country. Um, absolutely, one in three children is now overweight or obese. 
And we know that this is a problem not just um, for today, but also because it's a risk factor for chronic diseases in the future, so diabetes, heart disease. So it's really important to um, address this problem now, and schools are an excellent place to do this because that's where students and children spend the majority of their time outside of home. Obviously, teachers are engaged, uh, school administrators are engaged, but advice for parents, those of us who are very concerned and want to be a part of um, contributing to creating a culture of health, give us some advice. Great. So um, the way that we work with schools is we really try to build capacity within those schools. So each of the schools that we work with, they're creating what we call a school wellness council. So this is a group of committed staff people, administrators, students, and oftentimes parents who come together to address health within the school. So a great way for parents to get engaged is by joining that committee at their school and um, contributing their ideas, their energy um, towards that. most significant thing that we can achieve with this Robert Wood Johnson sponsored panel today is... I think that coming together around this topic of health within one community in Jersey City in Jersey City provides the opportunity to connect with others that we might not have thought of before and collaborate. Um, as the Healthy Schools Program, as the Alliance, we're really a collaborative organization, and we really like to bring others that are doing the same work together um, to work with our schools um, because it doesn't uh, make sense to all be working in our silos. The more we can come together and address this together, the more effective we can be. We're here in Jersey City at the Culture of Health Forum, sponsored by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We're here glad to be talking to Rob Caulfield, the owner of Fields Development Group, which does? We develop residential properties in urban markets, predominantly Jersey City and in Hoboken. Now, someone might ask, what does that have to do with creating a culture of health in this community of Jersey City? Well, we try to focus about sustainable building materials in our building and creating and promoting a healthier lifestyle really through the amenities, gyms, yoga studios, and just kind of create a culture that's a healthier, more livelier lifestyle. How new is that whole movement within uh, the work that you and your colleagues are doing in terms of the, saying, hey, we need to create a culture of health. That's part of what we need to be doing as opposed to building and making money. Well, we're always adapting our product to what the market wants and what the market demands. And what we see in these urban markets are much more healthier, active lifestyles. So we're trying to create a building that uh, caters to that. How challenging is that? Well, it's trying to stay ahead of the curve, uh, trying to anticipate what is coming, what's going to be there. You know, our developments from conception to delivery could be three years. So mm -hmm. it's trying to stay ahead of the curve and, um, and catering to what our eventual market will be. What do most people want? Gyms, common areas, um, places to gather outside of the apartments and just more of a community, community rooms, community lifestyle, healthier lifestyles. And it really does promote a culture of quote unquote health. Yeah, we find it becomes almost contagious inside the building. It, um, it, they form a sense of community. They get to know their neighbors. We have less of a turnover from a rental apartment perspective, which obviously helps the bottom line, of course. But it's just kind of building our brand as a developer and that people will recognize this healthier lifestyle, healthier communities with our other developments. And a forum like today, sponsored by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the fact that you are part of this very distinguished group of people, what does a forum like today mean to you? Well, I think it'll, it, for me, it, it's, it's good. And to your organization. Well, and to the organization, of course. It's, it's good for me to hear what else is going on in the community, to hear from other sectors besides really the real estate market. Uh, that's, that helps us, and I think it allows the other panelists to realize what we're doing. This is something they might not be familiar with, and how maybe we can kind of cross-pollinate what we're doing. One of the major healthcare leaders we have here at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Forum in Jersey City, talking about the culture of health, is Micheline Davis, Executive Vice President of Corporate Affairs, Barnabas Health. Um, you have a real interest in Jersey City because? Oh, we have an incredible interest in Jersey City, not just because it is the state's fastest growing city, but because we are now right here on the ground. As a result of a partnership with Jersey City Medical Center, Barnabas Health feels like it's just another aspect of the extension of its family. Micheline, mm. um, we've often talked to many executives, uh, clinicians and others from Barnabas Health and a lot of our healthcare programming in connection with public broadcasting, but I'm curious, I've never asked you this before. Uh, I say a culture of health you say? I mean, what does that mean to you? 
Oh, a culture of health and healthy living is exactly that which Barnabas Health is in the business of. For such a long time, we've described what we do, which is healthcare, um, in the wrong way, we think, right? We actually believe fully that what healthcare has done for uh, the extension of time has really been taking care of the sick. That's not healthcare, right? So creating a culture of health and a culture of healthy living is that which goes beyond the walls of our hospitals and goes out into the communities in order to ensure that we are shoring up the members of the community that we serve so that they're not coming to us in chronic crisis. Instead, we're helping them to live higher quality, better, long, sustaining life. So a forum like this, sponsored by the foundation, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, with the mayor here, Mayor Phillip, and other leaders, what does it mean? It means that the whole world is listening, right? That everyone is paying attention to the right thing at exactly the right time. And what would you hope comes out of an event like this? This is a incredible example of the best of humanity, quite frankly, right? What can come out of this, incredible partnerships, further collaboration, true collective thought that turns and shapes policy for the state of New Jersey, the region, this country, and the world. That's what I expect after today. Barnabas Health is all in in Jersey City. All in, my friend. Thank you, Micheline. Thank you. We do work as an interfaith community. We do work in partnership with the city through the Departments of Health and Human Services, through the Department of, of Housing and Community Development, through even public, the uh, departments that oversee parks, schools. We need to work together because we're talking about building a culture of health. Mm. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato coming to you from Princeton, New Jersey. We are the offices of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We're pleased to be joined by our good friend Betsy Ryan, President and CEO, New Jersey Hospital Association. Good to see you, Betsy. Thank you, Steve. Now, it's not an accident that we have you here at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. You have a partnership and collaboration with the foundation. But the one I'm particularly interested in that we've talked about in the past when it was just starting, uh, the Affordable Care Act, getting implemented, got to enroll people. And the foundation collaborated with your association to hire veterans to go out and enroll people in the ACA. Talk about it. That's right. <clears throat> the uh, foundation gave us some money. We were able to hire about 25 veterans from all different uh, wars that we've engaged in. And uh, they are deployed all over the state in teams of five or six individuals helping directly, helping people enroll either in Family Care, Medicaid, or the Affordable Care Act. It's a really neat program and it's shown some success. Why veterans? Uh, first of all, it's a, it was a good uh, pool of people. We knew we would get unemployed people, people with real life experience. There's also um, an added benefit in that many of them, about 40% are bilingual. Uh, and well, why, is that, why is the whole bilingual thing? Important? It's very important. New Jersey is a very diverse state, well over 100 languages spoken here. And uh, so we have a, obviously, uh, a veteran who uh, can speak Spanish, actually is now uh, the number two person on a Camden radio program on a weekly basis, talking about how you access health care, how you sign up. We have someone who speaks Korean up in Bergen County, where there's a large Korean uh, community, Swahili. I could go on and on. But it's very important to talk to people in the language that uh, they're comfortable with. You know what's so interesting? We talked to the folks here at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. They talked about the whole enrollment process in the Affordable Care Act. You know, we, we're very involved in public broadcasting and trying to talk about it, explain it, break it down. And that's great from a big picture perspective. But the folks at the foundation were saying how important it is one-on-one, -on -one. signing people up one-on-one, -on -one, and that is a large part of what you're doing. Absolutely, and you know, sometimes it doesn't get done in one visit. Sometimes paperwork is required. You know, the individual needs to bring back uh, some uh, specific information, and uh, we even had one instance where uh, a woman had been diagnosed with cancer, was laid off from work, and was talking to the uh, certified application counselor about not having chemotherapy, just waiting three months until she was officially signed up. Well, hold on, not covered at the time? Not, not covered, uh, laid off. Right. And that certified application counselor, that veteran, worked with her and said, please, please, you have to get your chemotherapy. Worked with her, 
found some way to get her enrolled immediately and she got her chemotherapy. That's a real story. That's real important. You know what's so interesting? We deal with statistics. Everyone's obsessed and we in the media as well. How many people have you signed mm -hmm. up? What did the president say? You know, what is Congress saying about how many of the president said and enrolled and are we there? But then again, you talk about that one person, that one person who enrolled who may not have enrolled if this veteran had not pushed the issue with her, made that personal connection. And that veteran may not have been there, probably wouldn't have been there if the foundation hadn't supported this grant to the hospital association. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Sure. I, these veterans have touched over 20,000 lives. Um, I can't say, you know, going back to statistics, I can't say they're all enrolled. We don't have that data yet from but the federal government. they've made contact. They've made contact. And, and now they've moved on from not only just enrolling people, but helping to connect them to the health care system. You know, if they see someone who is having behavioral health issues, they now know where to refer them to. So it's even gone beyond a little bit, the application process. Talk a little bit in a few minutes we have left. Uh, we'll talk big picture hospital world in just a moment, which I know you love talking I do. about, right? Um, the role of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. I mean, we always say this, you know, full disclosure, they are underwriters, the foundation underwriters of the, those of us in the world of public broadcasting. You do mm -hmm. have a grant from them as well. But they are the largest foundation in the country providing grants to those, of, to those dealing with health care, right? Absolutely. Why is a foundation like this so important? Well, first of all, we are blessed in New Jersey to have them here. They're right here. They're right here and they're right down the road from my association. And we've worked in partnership with them on a number of important things over the years. They show such tremendous leadership. Uh, in convening us in New Jersey and in convening people all over the nation on important, difficult subjects that maybe um, it's hard to get people to talk about in a room. And they're a neutral convener. Uh, they have a lot of smart people. I know you just had the president speaking and right. uh, really talented people. President of the people. foundation. Yes, very talented people who help lead us. Uh, you know, we all want to be leaders, but they lead us, they give us resource, resources to help take healthcare to the next level. Betsy Ryan is the president and chief executive officer of a great organization. It's the New Jersey Hospital Association. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -one with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, United Water. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Caldwell University, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by PNC Bank. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey, and by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Each year, Americans fill 4 billion prescriptions, but as much as one-third of that medication will never be used. Some of this waste ends up in the rivers, lakes, and streams that make up our drinking water supply. The United Water Foundation and the National Community Pharmacists Association have partnered to bring you a simple solution. Dispose your meds responsibly. Go to disposemymeds.org to find a participating pharmacy and to learn more. A public service message from the United Water Foundation and NCPA.